this edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com for your free account. And by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. And folks, this is another one of our holiday gift guides to help you look for and find things that you might want to give, that you might want to get. Um, and also, it, it's my chance to get together with some friends, have a few laughs, and share it all with you. Uh, if you haven't run into the gift guide shows before, which seems rather unlikely, but just in case, the rules are pretty simple. Um, it's a family-oriented show, so we ask that the gifts reflect that. Um, we encourage tech-oriented gifts, in other words, something that plugs in and turns on, but that's not necessarily absolutely required. And the final rule, which may be the toughest as we go along, is that this panel can't pick anything picked by previous panels. So we'll see how they do with that. And the only other note I want to make is that you don't have to take notes because everything that is listed here in the gift guide show will, first of all, be in the show notes for this episode. There's a master list being uh, maintained over on the Mac Voices blog at macvoices.blog. And there's also a Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide 2018 Flipboard Magazine so that you have a little more graphic approach to things if you like that and want to see them rather than just see links. So check all of those out. Again, those are all in the show notes. So let's go. We'll find out who we're, who we're talking to this time. Uh, and I just take my screen, as I always do, to make it easy and orderly. Oh, I should mention, we, we were supposed to have one other guest. He hasn't uh, been able to make it. If he gets here late, great. We'll chastise him roundly and include him in. First up, Mr. Mike Potter. Mac, Mike, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, Chuck, it's great to see you, too. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm I'm delighted to have you back again. This is uh, going to be fun, as always. And the new blacksmith himself, Mr. Josh Centers. Josh. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to live up to the blacksmith thing, Josh? Just wear my cowboy hat, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys know the rules. You heard the introduction. So we're just going to dive right in because uh, that's always the fun part. So, Mike, you get the very first pick for this visit for this particular episode. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. I'm honored. So, <clears throat> what I did is I came up with a few gifts here, and I tried to figure out the type of person you're going to give it to. So, each of the gifts I'm going to present is for a different type of user. And the first one is for the artist. Now, uh, many of us have these. The Apple Pencil. This is first generation Apple Pencil. I do have an iPad Pro 10 and a half inch. And of course, you know, a lot of the new iPads, the 9.7 inch, uh, and you can still get the older style iPad Pro uh, that uses the first generation Apple Pencil. Um, it, great machines. And if you have one, you don't necessarily need to get one of the, the latest and greatest iPads. You still have one of these sitting around. And, and one of the problems people have is that thing always getting lost. So, um, what, one of the things I looked for when I got my iPad Pro was a nice case to carry this in. And the case I ended up with is what I'd like to recommend first for the artist. And there's a very specific reason I recommend it for the artist. Um, this is from Belkin. Oh, it came with props, by the way. I came with props. So this is from Belkin. And uh, it's simply called the Belkin Carrying Case and Stand for Apple iPad Pro Pencil kind of a mouthful, but uh, uh, that's, that's what it's called. One of the things I like about this is, one, it's a rigid case. So there's no opportunity for your pencil to bend or break in, when it's stored inside this case. The other thing I like about it is that it has a magnetic lid. So it just snaps in place with magnets, and I like that a lot. Um, inside, it's uh, this, and this may not come across very well, uh, because it's all white, <laughs> but it's got a nice slot here for your Apple Pencil. And then the other thing I like is right here, and again, it's probably not going to show up very well, there's a little door 
and you can slide that open and everything falls out in your lap. And uh, inside this door is a spot for a new nub, a new pencil nub, the adapter for charging, and of course, the cap. And that's really nice. And it's all behind a nice little sliding door so that you don't lose that stuff when you take the pencil out. Now, the reason I recommend this for the artist is because as you are using your Apple Pencil, it's got a nice place to place it. So you can have this case on your desk, stick your pencil in there, use Affinity Photo, Designer, whatever you, you, you like to use as you're, you're working on your iPad, rest it in there and you're on your way. And then as you, you travel about, you can stick your Apple Pencil in there, snap it together. You don't have to worry about that. And I've, I've shaken this, trying to see if I can get that lid to come off. It's held on there pretty good with those magnets. And uh, it, it's, it's just a nice case. And it's uh, suggested retail is, I, I believe, $29.99 on Belkin. And I've seen it on Amazon. And I think I purchased it on Amazon for $19.99. So that, that is my first pick. I like it. I like it. And I especially like the way that the, the pen or pencil stands up in it on the desk like a quill pen. Yeah. And they, they do make a couple other uh, stands. And, and and there are myriad stands for the Apple Pencil. Don't get me wrong. And there are myriad cases for it as well. Uh, I just happen to like that this was not only the carrying case, but the stand as well. That was one of the things uh, that drew me to this particular case. Very nice. Yeah. Are you an artist, Mike? <laughs> no, but my daughter is. And, okay. uh, you know, for folks who don't know, the one of the main reasons I got the iPad Pro was to drive the cameras at MacStock. Uh, this is the controller for, for all the wireless cameras I have there. And I figured, well, when it's not being used at MacStock, my daughter can use it along with Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. And so I went ahead and got the Apple Pencil and I got this case for her so she can carry it about um, to, her, to, to and fro. Uh, with with her art classes, so great, nice pick, very nice pick, Josh. What are you going to do for round one? Well, I, uh, this is something I've actually been using for a couple of weeks now, and uh, I'm going to show it to you. Any any ideas what what this thing is? I, this I is have a, I have a guess. That's a sideways mouse. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you call it, it's called a vertical mouse, and uh, a lot of a lot of places make these, a lot of manufacturers make these. This particular one is Anker branded, but I can tell you if you go to AliExpress, it might be a little too late to order a Christmas present from AliExpress because they can take anywhere from one week to six months to ship from China. But um, it's about $15 from Amazon or about $5 from AliExpress. So very affordable for a gift. And um, for anyone who uses a computer a lot, um, probably means you have a uh, chronic pain in your arms or wrists or somewhere. And this actually helps a lot because what happens when you use a typical mouse like this or even a trackpad, um, and you can feel this yourself if you put your hand on your uh, pointing device, when, you, when your hand's like this, the bones in your wrist are crossed. And it puts a lot of strain on everything through there. And over time, as you click, um, keep clicking, it pulls things and just, I don't know, I, I had a lot of aches and pains in my, my forearm and, and uh, in my hand and wrist. But after a, uh, just a few days, actually, of using this vertical mouse, that has gone away. And it's a pretty basic mouse. It's got a left click, right click. So see, it's already more functional than Apple's Magic Mouse. And uh, it has uh, forward and backward buttons, has a DPI button, uh, if that's your thing, and of course a scroll wheel. And one thing I like about this, you don't have to just click it in, you can actually flick it down to do that middle, uh, I'm sorry, flick it up to do a middle click. So you don't have to keep pressing in, which that, that always irritates my forearm, but yeah, you can just flick it up and it takes not a whole lot of pressure to do that. And uh so uh, might be a very thoughtful gift if you know someone who uh, you know uses a, p a computer a lot, especially someone who is uh, maybe a PC gamer, because I, I had to give that up entirely because of RSI issues. And uh, you know it's a little odd, but I, I think I may actually be able to uh, get back into it at some point because it, it it's eliminated a lot of my RSI issues. 
That's, I mean, first of all, that's great. I, I'm always intrigued. Pointing vices, devices seem to be such a personal thing, whether they're mice or trackpads or something like that. And you had a medical reason for a, adapting to that, but it sounds like you really like it. Um, the Apple Pencil, I mean, everybody kind of has their own thing that they really love and believe in. It's, it's, it's intriguing that we haven't all standardized on something, mm-hmm. but I guess we all maybe have different needs. That's nice. Yeah, what, it, it, interesting that we, uh, <laughs> we somehow had an accidental theme for a round one here. Yeah. Um, who makes that particular one? Um, I'm not exactly sure who makes it, but it is Anker oh, branded. Uh, like I said, the Anker one is is fifteen dollars on Amazon, but you can get an identical one for about a third of that price on AliExpress. Um, he'll just uh, literally be on a slow boat from China. Um, they also make a wireless version. If you don't want the wire, uh, they make a wireless version. It's not Bluetooth. It's uh, it uses one of those dongles that you plug into a USB, but um, you might prefer that. And I think that's like $5 more. So it's like 20 bucks instead of $15. So either way you go, it's very reasonable. Very nice. That, that, that's an excellent choice. And uh, I, about two years ago, I had a client who uh, one of their employees uh, was on the verge of needing to quit because she had such bad RSI issues with her wrist and, and the mouse on the desktop. And she had researched into this and found these vertical mice and they were very difficult to come by a couple of years ago. And I was uh, really um, interested to see that recently they've become a lot more prevalent. And Anker's a great brand. So I, I wouldn't hesitate at all to buy that one. Yeah. And if uh, I hadn't been in, in a rush because my forearm was killing me, I probably would have gotten the one from AliExpress and <laughs> saved myself 10 bucks. But uh, yeah, you can't go wrong. I mean, it's cheap either way. Yeah, these things used to be really expensive. And you can still spend quite a bit of money on them. For instance, Logitech just came out with one. I think it's aimed at gamers, and it's like a hundred bucks or so. Yeah, I, I don't see any point in spending that much on a mouse. This this does the job, um, and none of them seem to have a, a whole bunch of bells and whistles anyway. So you know, save your money. Exactly. Yeah. Great pick. Great pick. Well, I'm going to start off, uh, or finish round one, I should say, start off my picks with sort of a combination pick, um, and you'll see why in a minute. But I would like to help you improve your iPhone photography. And as much as I love my iPhone, it can be awkward to hold it, hold it still, and especially if you're trying to hold it in a a, um, uh, landscape orientation. Um, So... Um, I'm going to suggest that you find a way to get a tripod onto your iPhone. Now, you can do you can spend a lot of money on tripods. You can get them in all sizes from all kinds of different brands. And if you are going to have do a standing tripod, that's one thing. But I'm going to recommend this little version of the Joby Gorilla Pod as a little miniature tripod that not only can stand anywhere, of course, but also can wrap around things to hang your phone from all kinds of interesting angles or interesting things, um, but hold it securely. Um, There are a couple of these out there. I I do want to point out, though, that, yes, this is great as a tripod, but also if you just squeeze the legs together and put your phone on top of it, you have a nice little handle. And that changes the way that you you can deal with it because now you have a free finger to tap that shutter, or you know however you're going to do it. But you can you can hold it. You if you're doing video, you can pan a lot easier because you've got a handle as a price as opposed to trying to coordinate everything here and keep it level. Um, so the Joby Gorilla Pod. This is again the miniature version is the one I'm picking for 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 this round. But as you'll see, it has um, just the screw on top, uh, the screw mount, and so you have to find a way to attach your iPhone to it. So you can get Joby Gorilla Pods with a mount, but I suggest that you get, this is a glyph, okay? And it snaps open like this, and then you've got a nice wide set of jaws to put just about any phone, including any of the large iPhones, in. Once it's once it's in, you snap it back, and it's locked in t- t- nice and tight in place. Um, it has the quarter twenty 
uh, screw mounts on the bottom. It has one there. So you can mount this in, again, horizontal portrait or landscape modes, depending on which, with no fear of your phone falling out. And if you put the two together, it looks a little something like this. And now I've got a very nice compact unit. And really, you can throw this in your backpack and have it available all the time as, as, as an assistant to take better photos. Because I don't know about you, the, 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 the iPhone, my, my 10s, yeah, 10s takes great photos. It's the human factor that fails, trying to keep my hand still enough to get those really tack sharp photos. And this is my solution. This is my way around it. Um, and it also, again, it just makes things very versatile. If you're taking a group shot, now you can put your phone somewhere and then trigger the phone either with its with the built-in timer or use your Apple Watch to trigger trigger it. Um, so a tripod for your, your iPhone, your iOS devices, um, the Joby Gorilla Pod and the Glyph is a great combination to do so. I'm going to have to get one of those Glyphs. Uh, the... Uh... I, I use a different mini tripod. I actually use the Manfrotto Pixie. It, I, I wish I had my camera bag right next to me because it's right in there. And uh, one of the things I like about that is the legs fold up into a, a handle, but it doesn't have the flexibility of being able to grip onto something like like uh, the Joby Gorilla Pod does. Uh, but I like it. It's nice and compact. And mine did happen to come with a clip for a phone, for a smartphone, but it's it's spring-loaded. And it's a lot more difficult to get the phone in there without <laughs> accidentally snapping it out and having it fly through the air and all kinds of weird stuff like that. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to look at that glyph as as the companion for my little uh, uh, pixie. Mike, that's that's what I really love about this. I've I've used and had the spring loaded ones, and they work great. But I get a little nervous again, especially if I'm trying to hang the the, the gorilla pod from some something unusual. Uh, the idea that I can snap this, snap that, and lock it in place just makes me feel a lot more secure. You know, I saw those. Uh, I don't know how good they are, but one similar to those at uh, Five Below, and of course they're five dollars mm-hmm. there. And also they have them on AliExpress. Uh, again, you're going to deal with the slow boat from China problem. But <laughs> if you have a Five Below nearby, you can get one of those for five bucks and uh, have it as a cheap stocking stuffer. And Josh, I would absolutely, I think that's a great idea. I don't know enough about those. And all I can think is I'm putting a thousand dollar iPhone on that. So if I'm hanging it from a tree or something. You have Apple Care, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's a fair point, but I don't want to go through the hassle. So You know what the genius is going to ask? They're going to say, did you use one of those cheap ones from Five Below or did you use a Gorilla Pod? Because if you, if you used a Gorilla Pod, you're covered. Yeah. Only if you buy it from the Apple store, though. <laughs> Only if you buy it from the Apple store. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like I like Josh's idea, though, because then you, you can have just a ton of those things and stick them in all your bags and not be in the situation where I'm in right now, where I want to show you my mini tripod, but it's in my camera bag upstairs. Yeah. There are a lot of great little mini tripods and, you know, find one that works for you. But the, 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 the Joby just is, first of all, I mean, we're laughing about it, but their quality is, is awfully darn good. Oh, they're great. I've never had a problem with them. And, you know, you are, I mean, seriously, you are putting a fairly expensive piece of equipment on there. And if it's, if you're just sitting it on a table, probably no big deal. Dangling it from a tree somewhere, eh, you may want, may, may want to think a little bit about that. <laughs> This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile at smilesoftware.com, the makers of world-class software. Did you know that you can go to techsexpander.com right now, download a free trial, and get your first taste of what so many in the Apple community consider to be their most essential productivity software? I'm at the top of that list, because when I go to use a Mac that doesn't have Text Expander installed, anything I write ends up looking like hieroglyphics, because I'm using the snippets I've created but they aren't there. When that happens to you, you'll know that you've become a full-fledged text expander convert. We all have things we type over and over again, day in and day out. In fact, we can often get pretty darn good at typing them. But why bother? By creating a text expander snippet for those items, just a few characters turn into anything you want. Your name, 
the date in the format you prefer, your address, an email signature, anything. Or maybe you're a little more ambitious. A text expander snippet can also turn into a paragraph of text, or a page of text, a block of HTML code, and much more. Setting up that snippet will take you well under a minute, but it pays you back every single time you use it. Let's not forget about the human factor. No matter how good and fast we get at doing all that repeat typing, mistakes can still be made, especially when things get routine. By using text expander snippets, you introduce consistency at a level that you just can't get any other way. I really want you to try Text Expander by Smile at TextExpander.com. It's your first, easiest step on the path to being more productive. As always, thanks to Smile and Text Expander for being the longest running sponsor of Mac Voices. Okay, so that's round one. Um, so we will just dive right into round two. Mike, take us there. Round two. Okay, so uh, first, uh, my first type of person to buy a gift for was an artist. Uh, the next person is the tinkerer. And uh, what this is, now this is, I'm, I'm going to warn you, my prop is the older version of this product. Uh, I have three of these. This is uh, from iFixit. Uh, it is the, the, in this particular case, it's the 54 bit driver kit. And uh, I, I have one of these in my car. I have one at the office and I have one at home and it is invaluable to me. I use this all the time. And one of the things I like about iFixit's kits is they always keep them up to date with the latest bits uh, for the type of screws that you're going to find primarily on Apple's products, but also the, the products of other manufacturers. Now, the current version of this is, is, a, is a lot nicer than mine in many, many ways. And in fact, as I was looking to get the link for today's show, I'm thinking, oh, now I got to upgrade all mine because I like the new case a lot better. So uh, the, the big deal with this one, the thing that maybe causes trouble for me is that um, I, do, I do like to use the lid of this to hold screws as I take them out, but it is a, a plastic case that's on hinges and it, it, it can break, you know? And one of the things about the new set, it's a 64-bit set instead of the 54 that I have here. Uh, one of the nice things about the new set is the lid is magnetic. So much like my Belkin pencil case, it just pops off and then you can stick it on the bottom and keep it out of the way or set it to the side. And it has, um, uh, quote unquote, official dividers built into it to use as a sorting tray for the screws that you're taking out of your Apple products. Um, the, like I said, the new set is uh, 64 bits. They also have, and that's uh, 29 dollars or at least it was today. I think they've lowered their prices for the holiday weekend, but uh, $29.99 for the 64-bit set. And then they have a 112-bit set uh, that includes not only uh, the, the smaller bits uh, like these are, um, but also quarter-inch bits as well. And that one is $49.99 right now on their site. And that I think is actually the one I'm, I'm going to go buy myself for the for the holidays. Um, but I use this a lot. It's um, got a nice little T handle in it, so that if I if I need to get a little extra force on screws to get them out, you can stick that T handle in and unscrew it. It's got an extender when you got to get down into the you know deep recesses of your Mac Pro or what have you. And uh, like I said, they they uh, they keep these bit sets up to date as well. And uh, one of the things I like, too, is when I bought one of the three I have, uh, one or two of the bits had an issue with it. I fix it had no problem at all sending out replacement bits. Uh, they stand behind their products just like they stand behind their uh, services that they offer. So I like that set a lot. Uh, I, I'm certain I paid more than $29.99 for it, but the current set with 64 bits is $29.99 at ifixit.com and it's called the um, Mako, the Mako driver kit. And uh, the 112 is the Manta. Very nice. So that's for the tinkerer. Or the repairer. Or, or the know, repairer. Yeah. Or somebody who just wants to dig inside their Mac for a while. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Any, anything from iFixit. It's hard to go wrong with anything from iFixit. It is, yeah. They they have all kinds of wonderful things to help take apart your Apple 
<laughs> your expensive yeah. apple bits and bobbles, uh, including, a, a, I call it the pizza wheel, to uh, separate the glass from the aluminum frame of your, your iMac. Mm. So, okay. Josh, what do you have for round two? All right. Well, speaking of uh, cheap crap from five below, <laughs> this is uh, something I've been using for a while. You know, uh, people always go on about these, uh, how do you say, Q, key, key, I, I don't know, the key. Yeah, key, the wireless chargers. I got this one from five below for five bucks. Wow. And, and that wasn't a special deal. They just have these. It's, uh, it's Yus. The brand is Yus, Yus Guys. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and it works uh, pretty well. Actually, I like this one a little better uh, in my office than this. The other one I have here is a RAV Power. This is one wire cutter recommends. I paid 15 for this on sale, but you know, cheap enough. Uh, what I do like about this one, now I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend this for a bedroom, but see, I can put uh, it lights up blue when it's charging. Mm-hmm. So, I always know when it's charging. So, this is actually a very good office desk charger um the outputs it's five volt 2.4 amp so i mean it's not gonna be an especially fast one but hey for a, if you know somebody who has an iphone 8 uh various android phones with wireless charging iphone 10 etc uh for five bucks you know you can get them one at least as a stocking stuff or, or you just get them several and they can just throw them around the house wherever they need them, but very handy. And uh, I've been using this for a couple months now and it works great. So yeah, for five bucks, can't beat it. Do the uh, LED lights turn off when it's fully charged? No. Uh, when it's always on. Well, yeah, no, I don't think, yeah, I think it's, it's always on when there's a connection and then otherwise there's the red light there. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't want this in a bedroom. It'd be kind of annoying. Uh, but you know, for five bucks, <laughs> you get what you pay for. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Like you say, for something like that, just to lay them, lay them on several surfaces around the house so you could throw your phone on them. Yeah. Very nice. Good job. Um, okay. So for my second pick, um, I'm going to give you more information than you really need to know. Um, because I, and this is a returning pick from other years, but I've tried a couple things to see if I could replace it, and I've I just haven't had any luck. Haven't been happy with them. I like to listen to something in the shower in the morning, whether it's music, whether it's audio pumped over from the TV, um, so I can keep up with the news of the morning, or whether it's radio, whatever. Um, it just feels like time in the shower without having something to listen to is wasted time. So I'm going to recommend the Flip 4 speaker from JBL. It has this very nice little integrated string that you hang, and I have a, a little plastic S-hook that goes um, over the, the wall of my shower. And this puts out a, a decent amount of sound. Um, if you use it for anything other than the shower, it still puts out a decent amount of sound. It's a great travel speaker. It's not too big. Um, the, the bigger versions, obviously, of, of the JBL speakers have a little better sound. Um, but for what I use it for, this is great. little low on the bass end, but on the other hand, in the shower, you, you don't, I mean, you're in basically a cube with hard walls on two, three, or four sides of you. And so there's a lot of echo. So you don't necessarily want a lot of bass. Um, The audio for this, as far as voice goes, is great. Um, And the honestly, I can get a good two weeks of showers in the morning out of this on one charge um, because that's that's just where it lives. It lives in my shower. Um, Coming out for just this special appearance on the show. Um, and I just, I've always found that the JBL products are absolutely terrific. Uh, so, um, depending on what time of year you're doing, uh, you're, you're shopping, you can get this in various colors for various different prices. Um, so I'd say over the holiday season, this is one to watch for. Um, if you need a good, a nice little portable speaker that you can use as a travel speaker or a kitchen speaker, or especially for me, a shower speaker, because it is water resistant. And actually, I think it's waterproof uh, down to a depth that my shower will never achieve. So uh, the JBL Flip 4. Back down there. Am I the only one that listens to things in the shower? You're like Uncle Frank from Home Alone (laughs) 2. 
Mike is muted. I think either that or he's miming. I'm not quite sure which. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. I was miming. I don't know. I, I was yeah. saying I only listen to my own dulcet tones. No, no, I don't sing. I don't. Oh. No. Yeah, no. And if I did sing, this would need to be turned up so nobody could hear me. <laughs> Drowned it out. That felt like two quick first rounds. Um, so let's see if the next two go equally quick. And and this is the point in the show where now we only have two rounds left. And sometimes it can get to a little stressful as to which of your picks you're going to go with. So, Mike, what are you going to have for round three? Well, I, I have them in order. And, and, and I purposely put them in this order just in case we had to cut off the fourth one. Uh, only because my fourth one is a little more difficult to come by, but it's awesome. So I hope we get to it. Uh, however, uh, my third pick is for The Traveler. And uh, again, this is something, uh, I eat my own dog food here. I have more than one of these. And uh, this is the Amazon Basics Universal Travel Case. <laughs> I always pick these things with the long names. Universal travel case for small electronics and accessories, comma, black. All right. So that's, that's, that's the, uh, the case here. Now, why do I like this one? Well, it's got a lot of neat. One, it's got a, a, a more rigid exterior. It's like a, a plastic exterior with a nice um, material cover on it. So it looks nice. It's, it's not plasticky looking. Uh, and inside, it's got lots of nice stretch pockets in here. So uh, let's see if I can, I'm going to do this in such a way that my power adapter falls out and smashes my iPad Pro screen. Um, but uh, over here on the side, I've got a little spot to keep my, my power adapter. And then I can keep my, co my cable coiled up nice in here and my RSI inducing um, mouse is up here at the top. And then over on the side here in the stretch pocket, <laughs> I've got all my dingles and dongles that I need to keep my Macs humming along beautifully uh, when I'm out and about, as well as some zipper pockets on the side here where I keep some uh, MagSafe 1 to MagSafe 2 adapters. I think I've got some uh, USB-A to C adapters. I've got all kinds of stuff in here on these little zipper pouches. And I have one of these for each of my bags, one for my MacBook bag, one for my MacBook Pro bag. And uh, they're only 10 bucks. They're only 10 bucks. And for when I went to look it up today, they now sell them in a 10 pack. You, you can get a 10 pack of these for $100. So 10 bucks a piece. And uh, it, it's, it's a really nice carry case. And it keeps, it keeps the stuff nice and safe and secure. Now, it does have another pocket on the outside, which... I don't feel is very secure, so I don't ever keep anything in there because it doesn't uh, have Velcro or any other closure on it. But I guess you could keep some small paperwork or something in the side. Um, but I like this case a lot. Uh, I use it uh, quite heavily, and uh, I, I, I can recommend it because it, it'll fit to just about any kind of uh, small electronic uh, doodads that, that you have. And it just so happens to fit the Apple power adapter really, really well in the side over there. So uh, that's the, uh, again, it was, I guess that was kind of a quick one, Chuck, but that's the Amazon Basics universal travel case. And uh, I like it. Ten bucks. Don't you love how Apple shaved off like a quarter inch of, of thickness from the MacBooks just so you could carry a case this thick for all your dongles? I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I even added, uh, you know, I was on uh, Dave Ginsburg's show yesterday, and we were talking about one of the benefits of the new iPads is that they have the USB-C adapter on them, so you only have to carry one set of dongles now instead of two, but I purposely went and added a couple of my lightning dongles in here just so it would look more uh, dongle-rific for you guys. <laughs> you know, Amazon Basics... Uh, they are doing a nice job. I mean, I'm not sure I would recommend every single one of the Amazon Basics product products, but for most of the time, that's a place that, unless you want something really specialized, it's it's a great place to start because the quality is pretty darn good. And yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to think. I well, for one thing, I know I have an Amazon Amazon Basic shredder. For heaven's sake, you know, that, I do too. I do, I do so, too. <laughs> 
Okay, there you go. Gee, and uh, camera backpacks. They have they have some really nice camera backpacks in the Amazon Basics line. Yep, and without the high prices. So right. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's mine right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, there we go. That, that, there's there's a, the next one for the gift guide. The Amazon Basics Shredder. Is, is that your? I, next I can endorse it. Yes, yes I can. Actually, another pick. Although that. Oh. We'll say that's a group pick. <laughs> I, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the first group pick of, of this year. <laughs> Accidental pick. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Good good pick, Mike. Okay, Josh, so you're not going with the shredder. What are you going with? <laughs> uh, well, uh, see, I would have went with the shredder, but I, I have a theme of cheap Chinese junk here, and I'm going to stick with it. Um, so, uh, so this is a USB-C cable. Oh, oh, oh. It's actually a magnetic breakaway. Now, nice. What's great about this, Belkin sells these, but they sell them for like 20 bucks. And who wants to spend 20 bucks on a cable, right? So, um, uh, and uh, I even saw uh, someone was tweeting today about there was a, a GoFundMe or no, no, go, Indiegogo. I can't keep these things straight, but they're like, oh, hey, we, we want to make these breakaway cables. And I was like, they already make those. They already, they already make those in China. Um, but don't get ripped off funding uh, uh, some crowdsource thing or whatever. You can get these for five bucks or less from AliExpress. Again, it could take anywhere from one week to six years to ship it to you. Um, I got this in in about three weeks. So, um, but you know, and, and uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to like these just yet because because here's the trick with this. So it'd be kind of hard to show you with the MacBook. But basically, what happens is you plug this cable in and you're this stays in there. This little nub here stays in there. And then you kind of use that port as a uh, sort of like a, like you'd use a mag safe. And so this will just click into it. And then they give you, it took me a minute to figure out why they include a little plastic wrench uh, with, with this cable. But that's the idea is the, the little nub stays in there. And then you, pr- if you need it out, you pry it out with this thing. And, um, so it's it sticks out ever so slightly. So it's a little strange. It's a little weird. And and again, it's why I wouldn't I, I wouldn't wouldn't tell someone, hey, spend twenty bucks on this. I think that's just kind of dumb. You know, get the one dollar to five dollar cable from AliExpress. And besides, that's where these places are getting it from anyway. It's the same manufacturer. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, I think it's only about a three foot cable. It could stand. You know, I, I would probably look for one a lot longer, uh, or I guess I get some kind of extension for it. But like again, you're paying. A quarter of the price or less than what these big companies uh, are going to charge you, and this is actually a pretty nice cable. It's a, it's a braided cable, so I have no fears about it ripping or tearing anytime soon. Um, so if you're you know if you're kind of missing MagSafe, you're sort of fed up with Apple's USB C Thunderbolt three thing, and you want some kind of magnetic breakaway, yeah, just go to Ali uh, AliExpress, and I swear AliExpress isn't paying me. I'm not an agent of the Chinese government. Um, but it's just, this is where I'm doing all my shopping this Christmas, but just search for, uh, this is a WS Ken light Two magnetic cable plug, fast charging micro USB type C USB C cable, magnetic charger cable for iPhone cable type C USB C just type magnetic USB C cable, something like that. And, uh, you'll find something from one of the various quality manufacturers, uh, in, in the Asian regions and, uh, they can hook you up for not a lot of money and do it before our illustrious president hits them with more tariffs. And these things suddenly cost 10 times more. <laughs> Finally, someone with a longer product name than mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the product name. <laughs> Josh, you just spend all day on Alibaba just kind of cruising around looking for these things or do they yeah. present themselves to you in some way? No comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I actually bought a lot of this stuff recently. They have an event in China. Um, it's fairly new, but it's turned into their version of Black Friday. It's co- it's 11-11. They call it Singles Day. And I guess it's supposed to be like the oh, opposite yeah. of Valentine's Day. But for some reason, it's become a big shopping day over there. And so there's a bunch of this stuff I was able to buy really cheap. Like this cable is usually five bucks. It was like a dollar fifty on eleven eleven. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, got got a lot got a lot of really great deals there. And, and it was one of those things. I love buying stuff from AliExpress, but it's a bit of a gamble because it may really be a big piece of crap, or it may take forever to show up, 
or um, it may be seized by customs because uh, they didn't label it as a flashlight or something like they're supposed to. So <laughs> uh, I don't think they're actually supposed to, but it's what they're actually supposed to do to get through customs. Um, so it's always a bit of a gamble. Like I said, I probably wouldn't order anything for a Christmas gift this close, but if, if you need a cable for yourself, and hey, you are the one person you should buy the best gifts for anyway. So uh, <laughs> There you go. So, Good place to shop. So is it safe to say that if you want to order this as a Christmas present, you'd be ordering it for Christmas 2019? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, you know, yeah. By then, Apple will finally realize that they should have done this in the first place, and you can purchase it for twenty nine ninety nine at the Apple Store. Wow. You think it'll be that cheap? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, I think fifty nine ninety nine and includes a T two chip, and if you try to plug in any other kind of cable like it in your MacBook, it will fry the entire thing. And yeah, that's, that's a great point. Uh, I just lost my nub. Well, <laughs> I'll be I'll be yeah, ordering only a buck fifty. Yeah, <laughs> See, this is why you don't want to spend twenty bucks for one of these things because you could very easily lose the piece for it. <laughs> yeah. Hey Josh, serious question now. Um, because they they give you that little wrench. I mean, I, I get it. You know, trying to pry that out. Um, mm-hmm. But how flush does it fit on that side? I mean, does it really oh, yeah. flush fit or f- fit flush? Or oh. is there? I mean, there obviously has to be a little something to grab it with the tool. Uh, I was trying to avoid this, but here we'll just for the sake of science. I think that's great. Uh, you know, I'd I'd be willing to pick up a couple of those, and I'm sure they work with adapters and all kinds of other stuff too. That's about how far. It's maybe uh, okay. five millimeters, something like that. It's not a whole lot of. You know, I can show you. I can show you. That's click not it. bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. It's not super obtrusive. Some people really complain about this. I mean, which I guess if you're an Apple person, it might be the sort of thing that bugs you. And see, right there, it it, it all came out together. But sometimes it doesn't. So make sure you keep that wrench handy. Let's see, it just just break it away. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the most elegant solution, but hey, it's a lot more elegant than you know dragging your laptop off the table, which I've nearly done several times now. Yeah, yeah. I, I do miss MagSafe. Uh, I yeah, it, I think Mister Ive might complain about it a little bit, but that's that's about it. Yeah, well, we all do. We all add things to our phones and Macs and devices that uh, I think Mr. Ive would not approve of. But <laughs> well, who designed that battery for the, the the iPhone that Apple sold? I mean, you know, yeah, okay. the little bulge thing mm-hmm. on the back. Yeah, yeah. nice uh, enough, but you yeah. know, yeah. Okay, this, no, we're not going to beat on Johnny. Not not at the holidays. Not at the holidays. <laughs> Um, okay, so for my third round pick, I, I'm going to do a little more of a generic pick because I, it's, it's tough to come up with one that suits everybody. Um, but if you have an iPad of any stripe, I don't care whether it's the mini to the brand new iPad Pros um, or anything in between, any generation, any size, uh, there's just, I'm sorry, there's just no doubt about it that you, c- you can be more productive with a keyboard of some kind. Now, Apple sells the the, the folio cases. Um, there are a couple other manufacturers that sell different folio cases for the different sizes. Um, there also, Logitech sells a couple cool little, uh, fairly rugged Bluetooth keyboards that don't necessarily fold up. They just, you know, would be like another large flat thing that you would slide in your backpack. Um, and that's, they're especially good for the iPad minis. But if if you're not quite sure about how to make your iPad be more of a product productivity machine, I want to encourage you to, to get, get a keyboard. I don't care. And again, I don't care what it is, depending on what your budget is, which size iPad you have and, and what's available for that iPad, but get yourself a keyboard and you're going to find out just how nice and easy um, you this this machine turns into a productivity machine. Not going to take the place of my uh, of my MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, or no, excuse me, MacBook. Um, but at the same time, uh, I find it a lot easier to take my iPad places that a, a laptop might be a little intrusive, might seem a little bit strange. But having um, my iPad there, any of my iPads there, really is okay. And I don't feel weird about it. I don't feel like I have to watch kind of over my shoulder to see if anybody's going to take it. Like maybe I might feel if I had a, a full-blown MacBook sitting there. 
Um, so yeah, check out check out a keyboard for your iPad. And again, Logitech is a great place to start, or of course, Apple as well, if you don't mind paying the price. Well, I like the Logitech keyboards for the iPad. They're they're very, very nice. I I investigated a number of the less expensive brands and I, I play the logic one. I'm really happy with the logic one. Yeah, I, I mean, there is something to be said once again for, you know, you you get what you pay for. Um, and Logitech seems to be pretty rugged. And I'm sure Josh, you know, for, for you know, 35 cents, he'll come up with one from Alibaba. Um, <laughs> but I'm just not sure when it'll get here. <laughs> just yeah, just search Alibaba for, for anything we recommend. You can find a cheaper version of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Order 10 minutes. Yeah, which you may or may not receive actually after you order it. Yeah. Oh, you'll receive it. Just you know, it's just a matter of uh, you know, will you still be alive by the time it arrives? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Ops Genie by Atlassian. With Ops Genie, your next incident doesn't stand a chance. It is easy for your company to look good when things are going right. It is when things go wrong that the really great companies shine. And trust me, sooner or later, things are going to go wrong. How your company looks when an incident occurs depends on what you do before it happens. That's where Ops Genie by Atlassian comes in. Ops Genie empowers development and operations teams to plan for service disruptions and stay in control during incidents. And control is what you want when things go wrong. Ops Genie gives teams the power to respond quickly and effectively to unplanned issues helping notify all the right people through a combination of scheduling and escalation paths that address communication challenges like time zones and holiday issues. OpsGenie allows for deep flexibility in the how, when, and where aspects of alerts being deployed. With over 200 integrations with apps like Jira, Amazon CloudWatch, New Relic, and many more, you can integrate with the apps you're already using, saving valuable time in setup and training. Software has become a central part of our daily lives both business and personal, making things easier, faster, and more accessible. But that means that when your service is down, it makes a bigger impact on your customers and on their perception of you. Ops Genie helps you keep those downtimes to a minimum, alerting you to when they happen so you can respond faster. And in the reliability game, every minute counts. You can get your company a free account not a trial account, but a free account, and add up to five team members for free right now by visiting OpsGenie.com. You heard me, a free account and up to five team members free at OpsGenie.com. Find out why, with OpsGenie, you will never miss a critical alert again, and your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Thanks to OpsGenie for their support of Mac Voices. All right, guys, uh, round four. So, because we, we're doing great on time, and, and Mike has this incredible round four pick that I definitely want to make sure we get to. Um, so, Mike, uh, this, is, this is it, your big finish. My big finish. Well, I, I hope this is an incredible pick. I, I, I will admit, I've used this pick many times in the past. I absolutely love this. Um, and sticking with my long titles, this one also has a long title. This is for the historian in your life. And uh, this is a book called Revolution in the Valley, the insanely great story of how the Mac was made. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this book. It was written uh, by Andy Hertzfeld. It actually originated with his website, folklore.org, which I definitely encourage anyone to go check out. There's all kinds of wonderful, wonderful stories about uh, the inception Uh, up through the release of the Macintosh on that site. And uh, this book not only chronicles the early history of Apple, uh, but more importantly, the the development of the Macintosh. And uh, this is a little bit harder to come by. This is is actually the hardcover edition of it. Uh, You can still get it for paperback on Amazon. Uh, I saw it for $39.99 on there in paperback format um, just today. And you can get it in Kindle format for $9.99. Um, but there's, well, I tell you, there's nothing like having the physical pages with these pictures in it. And, uh, it, I would definitely, if, if you do get this book and you get it for someone, definitely encourage them to go to folklore.org as well, because it makes a, a wonderful companion to this book. Um, 
for example, you learn how uh, Andy Hertzfeld decided to show uh, Steve Jobs the website when he first it was I think it was 2004 he said oh, I got this website it's it chronicles the history of the the Mac and all that and he decided to go to Steve Jobs and tell him about the site and Steve Jobs thought it was thought it was pretty cool and he was very encouraging about it but he said what's with all these horrible scans all these old photos that you have on there and you learn on folklore.org that Jobs opened up um well, what was uh, basically? Let me let me make sure I get the wording on this correctly. Um, it was the Apple Marketing Archive, is what Jobs called it. He opened that up to Hertzfeld, so we could go and find original photos and get better scans of them. And uh, this was back in two thousand four, and it was just a. The, and I'm partially quoting Mr. Hertzfeld here. Uh, par- it was just a single room in a simple building a few blocks from the main Apple campus, stuffed to the gills with file cabinets as well as cardboard boxes from Mike Markula's garage that were all chock full of material of Apple's first four years, none of which had been cataloged. Uh, some of it had been cataloged in an old FileMaker database and things like that. But those are those are some of the interesting little nuggets that you can pick up by combining folklore.org along with this book that uh, in, in has all these wonderful photos and anecdotes uh, from the early history of the Macintosh. Highly recommended. There's a forward in here by Waz. And of course, there are stories in here from uh, all the uh, early folks who were involved with the Mac, including um, uh, Bill Atkinson and Jeff Raskin and Susan Kerr, John Scully, and, uh, you know, both Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. So uh, excellent book. Revolution in the Valley is the short name of it. And if you can find it, I think it makes an excellent gift for the Apple fanatic in your life. That is that is a great pick. I That book is on my bookshelf. And I yeah. agree. That is a, a fantastic pick. I Especially, imagine it's on all of our bookshelves. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, still, it's still on the slow boat from China for Josh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, I'll express for two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> You're not serious, are you? I was going to say this is one thing you can't find on AliExpress, but maybe you can. Maybe you can. I don't know. It, it's an amazing place. <laughs> it, it was originally published by O'Reilly. I did check out their site. They're they're selling their products through a different site now, and it looks like you can you can get the paperback of it through them somehow. But they encourage you to shop on Amazon and. I don't know. If, if, if nothing else, I hope that O'Reilly decides to uh, re-release this. Um, everything out there right now is all first edition, so maybe we'll get a second edition one of these days. Very cool. Good, good job. That is a big finish. That is a great finish. Yeah. Josh, are you going to stick with your theme, or are you going to finish big? I'm going to break away from my cheap Pete impression and uh, go to something a little, a little uh, more extravagant. Uh, this is actually a if uh, you have any gamers in your life, uh, specifically if they own a Nintendo Switch and they're not already getting this game, this is probably going to be the game of the season, uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Mm. Which, uh, mm-hmm. if uh, They've been making these games for about 20 years now, but if you're not familiar with them, the it's a fighting game, but it has all of the Nintendo characters in it. So it's like Mario versus Link. Uh, you know, Zelda versus Link, Kirby, you know, all this stuff. And, and this, this particular installment is going to have every character they've ever had in any of these games, which is like over 40 different characters. So Pac-Man is a playable character. Sonic the Hedgehog is a playable character. Uh, Snake from the Metal Gear Solid games is a playable character. Um, hundreds of hours of entertainment. Always a really fun game. And you don't have to be particularly good at these games to have fun at them because they add enough random elements to them, like various items falling all over the place. Uh, you know, there's a certain bit of luck unless you turn all that stuff off. Uh, but it's also suitable for tournament play too. And there's quite a big scene around that as well. So, uh, super smash brothers ultimate. If, uh, you know, you want a Nintendo switch and they're not already getting this game and, uh, a side pick, I'll add to that, uh, in case, uh, somebody is getting this game, is uh, you can always get uh, the <clears throat> excuse me. You can always get uh, the Smash Brothers player uh, another set of Joy Cons, which are the 
uh, controllers for the Nintendo Switch because this game ha- can do up to eight players in the same room at the same time. And each Joy-Con, uh, this is a really clever design. It's it's a single controller, but you can split it in two. And you can have one in each hand or, and this is what's uh, great about it, for multiplayer is you can give one to one person and keep one for yourself. So you only need one set of them for two people to play. And so uh, if you have one set of them that two people can play, but it, you know, if you get someone an extra set of joy cons, and that's anywhere from 60 to 80 bucks, usually for the joy cons, I think they're $70 is the actual MSRP, but um, uh, you get them a set of those. That's two more people that can play at the same time. So, uh, you, you know, that's my pick, uh, and and the, around my house, that's probably what we're going to be doing a lot of uh, this holiday. So I'm going to finish up with something that I don't know. This this too is a returning pick for me. Um, it seems like no matter where you go right now, everybody is touting different wireless routers, um, and everybody's competing to be the best. Um, and unfortunately, as we all know, Apple got out of the out of the wireless router business. Um, so I'm going to pick the, the Eero. Uh, I have an Eero system in my home. Uh, it's, it's a mesh network. And so it is, and it has definitely extended my Wi-Fi beyond the confines of my home, out into my yard, out into the street, sometimes beyond, um, which is not a bad thing because it's password protected. Um, there, if you really dig into this stuff, I mean, for some reason, the world of routers has exploded and everybody's claiming theirs is better. Um, I really like the Eero because, first of all, it was so simple to set up. It was amazing. They have a terrific iOS app that walks you through it. But they, the thing that, for me, is kind of the killer feature is that anytime they're doing updates, they push them out to the router automatically. I don't get a, a notice on my phone that I have to go and you know do something to it. Um, since I've owned it, I have not. I've not turned it off once. I haven't had to. It's one of those set it and forget it things. Eero is doing the maintenance for me. Um, I have two of the uh, the extenders in my house. I could easily get a couple more. Frankly, I could probably hop it over to to the neighbors if I really wanted to, but they're not paying me, so they're not going to get my Wi-Fi. Um, but yeah, I you know again, I, there are a lot of these out there. And I'm not prepared to say this is the, oh, my God, this is the absolute best for these 25 technical reasons. I can just tell you that from a usability standpoint, it is absolutely phenomenal. And from a reliability standpoint, I have had no reason to go. And and I've not seen any feature set that makes me want to move over to another one or even try another one. So go and check them out. I think you'll be very happy with them. And if you have a, a home where... Uh, it's 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 long, or you're having connectivity problems one place or another. Uh, again, this is a, a lot better than trying to do a power line thing through the electrical wiring. Just get a, wesh, a mesh network set up, and you'll be a lot happier. What are you guys using in in that uh, area? I use the I actually rent a router for my ISP. And uh, part of my my original reason for that is because uh, around here uh, the the ISP is the phone company, and they have a real problem with lightning coming through the lines, even on fiber optic connections. For some reason, I had a friend who who lost some equipment to this. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't quite understand how lightning comes through a fiber optic cable. But anyway, um, so I just decided to rent it from. It's three dollars a month. Uh, but it's actually, tr- I, can't, I can't tell you off the top of my head what kind of router it is, but it's actually trying to be an awesome router. It's it's about this, it's about the size of a PlayStation 2. It looks a lot like a PlayStation 2. And uh, I get uh, not just Wi Fi throughout my house, I get it all the way about 200 yards yonder way, <laughs> to about 200 yards that way out to my building. My building is a Faraday cage because it's metal. But uh, yeah, I get I get Wi Fi basically all over this property. So um, I've been super impressed with that. Now, if I did not do that, if I did not have an, uh, access to an amazing replaceable router for three dollars a month, I probably would buy the Eero because I hear a lot of great things about them, and they do indeed seem to be the heir apparent to the airport line. Yeah, I, I and, and that's it. That it's some I know. Dave Hamilton loves to geek around with routers, and you know, good for him. I want to come home and. 
you know, be able to access my network and, you know, get things done. And the Eero has done that for me. And I just have seen no reason to make any changes. Mike, are you a mesh network guy or you have just a, your basic router? Uh, I am uh, at home uh, where I'm at now. I'm an, an, an OG airport mesh network user. Uh, you can probably see my old airport router right there. Um, I've got a time capsule in the house. I've got a couple airport expresses, and and it's a, one big old mesh network. And Apple got out of the game just in time for it to become popular, uh, which is awesome. Yes, yeah. I love it. So <laughs> anyway, uh, when when I'm when I'm not using Apple routers, uh, which I I absolutely love to deploy them to my clients. Uh, uh, there's you talk about Faraday cages, Josh. Uh, one of my clients is in an old courthouse in Woodstock, and all th- those walls don't let anything through them. And we had to deploy these airport expresses in airports all throughout their restaurant in order to get seamless you know, roamable network all throughout for their, their customers and for kitchen staff and for office staff. Very easy to set up, very easy to maintain. Uh, but now for the clients that uh, want something new, we can't get those new Apple routers anymore. So I'm using, uh, uh, for the smaller clients, a lot of times Netgear Nighthawks. And those seem to work really well. They have excellent coverage with just one router. And if you if you need to, you can purchase a second one and set up a, a mesh network with them. And they, they work well for that. And in general, for the small business clients that I have, it's, it's a bit more cost effective than something like the Eero or any of the other mesh networks that are available right now. Right. Guys, once again, it's another great set of picks um, the, for you know for just about everybody on on the list, including you. And I want to thank you for taking the time to come and um, sharing a little bit of holiday spirit. Um, and I also want to make sure we know folks know where they can find you when you're not here. So, Mike, start with you. Where can folks find you? Well, you can find me in a couple different places. So the first would be uh, MaxDoc. MaxDoc is the annual conference for Apple users. It takes place here uh, near Woodstock, Illinois. Uh, next one, can I do a little plug here? Next one's coming up July 27th and 28th, uh, 2019. And uh, it, that's maxdocconference.com or maxdoc2019.com. Either will get there. And I am Mike at maxdocconference.com. Uh, and then, of course, my podcast is For Mac Eyes Only, and you can find me at ForMacEyesOnly.com or uh, on Twitter at ForMacEyesOnly or at MacStockExpo. So those are probably the best places to, to find me. Perfect. Thanks for being here and happy holidays. Yes, thanks for having me. And once again, we're we're ending just in time for the sun to come down. I yeah, was debating if I had to go turn on a lamp or something. It does seem a theme to be a, be a theme with us, Mike. I think so. Josh, where can folks find you? As if I didn't know. <laughs> I am ostensibly the managing editor of Tidbits, which you can find at tidbits.com. Uh, I have written several titles for Take Control, which you can find at takecontrolbooks.com. I uh, occasionally make YouTube videos. I've been a little uh, sidelined lately with the newborn. But uh, if you look up me up on YouTube, just search for Josh Sinners and uh, you'll pull me right up. And uh, God help you. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I am Jay Centers on there. And uh, you know, uh, God bless your soul if you decide to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, thanks so much. Congratulations. I didn't do, do that at the initial. Congratulations on the new fatherhood and uh, happy holidays. Right, same to you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We'll be back with more soon. Again, you can find all the links to everything in the show notes to this show. Um, in Mac Voices Magazine's Holiday Gift Guide on Flipboard and on the Mac Voices blog at Mac Voices blog. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.